All right, so once you get your all your bolts torqued in the case and you've got your case sealed, the, the next thing you want to do is put your uh, fifth gear assembly back together and install the fifth gear cover. Um, the last thing you're going to do is the differential uh, preload. So you can't do that until, or you can't put the bell housing on until you do that. So uh, this is the logical next step. So uh, the one thing I haven't done yet is I haven't put these bolts in yet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to send them in first with this and then actually torque them. <clears throat> I've already got ahead and put blue Loctite uh, 242 on them. So I, I like to do that because it acts as a lubricant to protect the threads since these are tapped threads. And then it also acts as a thread locker, so um, which is also what you want. So uh, the torque wrench is already set on 37 foot-pounds, which is the same as what these 10 millimeter bolts were that were in the case um, 37 foot pounds the same as five deca newton meters or 550 newton meters so I'll go ahead and torque these holding the transmission in place <clears throat> while you're doing this can be a little bit tricky sometimes so and uh, we'll get into that as we get to um, do the main input shaft nut so <clears throat> all right so now those are torqued so, next thing to do is set up the fifth gear assembly. So I've got the fifth gear assembly sitting right here, and I'll talk through the different pieces of that right now. Um, in the very center, you can see you've got this um, these needle roller bearings and this uh, this sleeve here. So um, that's what the needle rollers actually roll on. And then you've got this um, <coughs> you've got your your dog gear, which is what actually rides on the splines of the shaft and um, that is what that gets engaged when the sliding coupler slides and engages it and connects it to the actual uh, fifth gear itself so um, connected to that you've got your brass synchro ring and then here is your sliding coupler and if you look inside your sliding coupler there's a uh, there's a spring and that will pop out. I'm not going to take it out because I want to make sure that it stays in the same location. But that spring um, needs to be there because once you shift into gear, it's one of the uh, essentially the detents that helps hold you into that gear. So uh, I'm going to just go ahead and stack this all back together because <clears throat> I think it's best to install the whole fifth gear assembly together as a whole. So um, put these needle rollers and the sleeve back in the middle, and then. This is your fifth gear selector fork, and you have to put this on to the fifth gear before you can put it on. Also, before you put um, any of the assembly on, you need this big plate washer. This goes on the uh, outside of your double angular contact bearing uh, before you put your assembly on. So, so I've got the whole assembly right here ready to go. You need to make sure the, um, <clears throat> the shaft of your um, fork goes into this hole here as you install it and then uh, yeah just install it all together so there it is so that all goes on um, this aligns with your sliding or your gate there and then lastly you've got you got your cone shaped washer I don't know if you can see the cone shaped washer but you want the dish portion to be facing inward and then the nut goes on the outward um, on the pointy side of the cone per se and um, this nut gets installed with let's see what does it say it says 13.5 deca newton meters which is uh, 135 newton meters which is essentially almost exactly a hundred foot pounds so <clears throat> so that one it's going to be tough to uh, install because the case is going to want to turn on it. So um, here is there's actually a tool, a Renault tool that I've never been able to locate, but it's it's designed to go into these holes here to hold the transmission. Um, I searched for a long time, never been able to find it, so I kind of rigged up something similar, simply using a piece of bar stock and a bunch of washers and a couple 10 millimeter bolts. So what I do is I take a stack of 10 millimeter washers here, 
put them on the holes. And then I have this piece of bar stock that I've drilled two 10 millimeter holes into. And like this, and a nice thick washer so that it's bridging it so that it doesn't crush the tube. Not that you're really putting that much force on this, but just to be aware of it. And then take another 10 millimeter bolt here. You can, you know, truly you can just use the bell housing bolts for this because you're not really going to put much load onto them. So, so those are lined up. I'm just going to go ahead and. This side needs a couple more washers, it looks like, under there. Just act as a spacer there. So that's tight. And essentially, that just gives you a nice big lever arm to counteract the. Uh, the effect of trying to torque this this nut here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and set the torque wrench up for, and actually this one being digital, I can actually set it to newton meters. So it's on newton meters. Uh, go up. It says 13.5 decanewton meters. So 135 exactly right there. And like I said, if you switch back, 99.5, so pretty much exactly 100 foot-pounds. Um, for this, you do need a big socket. You need a socket that's big enough for this nut. And I do have a big socket set here. I think it's the 1 and 3 16 is the one that I use. I'm not sure exactly what that is in metric, but I'm going to have a 3 quarter inch adapter. here so getting that ready um, and then I personally I believe it's uh, the best idea to put red Loctite onto this nut um, it's really the output shaft nut that you need to be concerned with spinning off because it is rotating in the direction such that um, it's being encouraged to get looser whereas this one is uh, tighter but even still I think it's a good idea to um, Really, the lock, the red Loctite just makes it so that in the future when you want to remove the nut, you have to um, heat the shaft and you have to heat the nut. So um, just be mindful of that. So, And I had to do that when I was taking it out the first time. So here's the red Loctite. I'm going to put some on the shaft there. Loctite red. You don't need a ton. It just gets into the threads and then holds it. that on <coughs> and then you do have to pull two of the selector rods out um, and you don't want to do the fifth gear one because that one's probably the weakest of all of them so I'd say the two middle ones that just locks the two shafts in place so that now the, the as you turn it's not going to try to rotate the shaft so and then Grab a hold of the box here and, and start torquing. All right, we're getting up there. All right, there it is. 100 foot pounds. And the last thing you need to do is you need to find where the uh, the the stake point is on this shaft. It's hard to see on this shaft, but um, let's see. Actually, I've got the my next shaft right here. You can you can probably see right there. There's a little flat spot on the shaft, and that in that location, you actually take a punch like like this. And you will, <clears throat> you will st 
stake the nut so that um, it essentially for, uh, acts as another form of uh, locking a lock nut to hold the, the, that nut in place. So, um, so that's it. Once you've got that, you can push these back in place. They can be kind of a pain, but um, one. Two. All right. So we're back in business. Let's see if fifth gear shifts properly. Yep. There you go. And uh, out. Oh, all right. And uh, you can see this is where your detent engages for fifth gear. And and so that's it. So that is uh, the installation of the fifth gear. The next thing is to install the fifth gear cover.